Well, you guys just got in there? I've been here a couple of times. Is that right? What have you been doing here? Rehearsing. Is that right? What do you rehearse? Each place in the middle of about an hour out of town. Mm -hmm. But Bowie did a gig there on the other side. It's just like a big exhibition hall, you know. Is that right? Wow. So what, there hasn't been very much preparation before coming to Japan, or is it just sort of the last 11th hour? No, the place we were originally supposed to go to rehearse was, um, there was an explosion there on the Yama, it was a Yama Park camp. Fifteen people were killed in Singapore about two days before we were due to go there. Uh -huh. So we had to make pretty swift um, arrangements to oh, continue the production. Oh, I see, you were supposed to practice there. Mm. Oh, I see. You were supposed to be in the Singapore mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Production rehearsals, but you know but the whole place was closed down yeah. because of the explosion. It's completely total. It's completely total. Is that right? So basically, rehearsal, rehearsals going pretty good then. Rehearsals go. Is it, is it going okay? Oh yeah, yeah, it's going fine. I think you know the group sounded in some respects better than we've ever sounded. Really? Yeah. How much uh, rehearsal is done before coming to Japan? Um, with Greg Lake now. Is about three weeks. About three weeks? Yeah, three to four weeks. So, were the concerts in Japan, in effect, be your first con uh, official concert with Greg Lake? It's, it will be the very first, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. First official. Yeah. It's kind of a early to, to uh, evaluate him, I think, but how's he working out with the rest of the band? How's he fitting in? Um, it's always difficult for someone to walk into a band, particularly an established one. Under the circumstances, you know, he's, he's really settling down well. Mm -hmm. and he's got a difficult job, you know. It's not it's not easy being the vocalist in the front of the band. You know, being a musician is one thing, but being able to deliver musically is another, you know. And uh, he's, he's working on that and getting into palace, which is good. What have you felt are his strong points so far? Well, I think the consistency vocally, you know, is, is a very strong point. Got a great voice, you know, which is Asian. Asian needs that sort of energy on the vocal level. You know, it's it, although all the musicians have got reputations of being uh, <laughs> instrumentalists. Asia sounds so always had a very, very dominant vocal picture on it. So, you know, it's important that we keep and establish that. And so, really, that you know. It's too early to see how this creative side will come into it at the moment. He's just basically getting live with John Wetton did, you know, on the records. I hope you don't mind me shoving this in your face, but this is all going to be written down in uh, Japanese afterwards, so we can get it as loud okay. as possible. Is this your first time working with uh, Greg Lake, or had you had any experiences before? No, this is the first time. Uh, obviously, Carl had a pretty long relationship with him. And, um, Steve, I think, maybe just met him socially, you know, but I, I'd never met him before. Mm. Being a keyboard wizard yourself, though, I would imagine you grew up on stuff like Yes and ELP. I did, yeah, yeah. You know, Emerson was, was uh, when I was at school, he was my hero. Is that right? Yeah. And Yes, you know, Yes uh, yes and ELP were my, my two favorite bands. Well, particularly the Nice, you know, I like the Nice, not so much ELP. But, uh, Yes, it's quite ironical that I'm sort of playing with you know, three musicians who came out of that area, whereas I did it myself. You know. A lot of people refer to Asia as a group of four veteran rockers from the 70s, you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, I was never a veteran rocker from the 70s. <laughs> well, that um, success came to me pretty late on, you know, in fact, right at the end of 1979 when Video Killer Radio started. You know. Well, are your ages that uh, uh, apart? No, they're, they're a few years older. Years older. Yeah. Right. Anyway, you were with a band. You were with Buggles. Right. Yeah. Right. With Trevor Horn. That's right. Yeah. We were, we were we did the whole thing between us. Uh huh. And that was your first experience in professional music. Yeah. In terms of actually making records, yes, it was. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'd done sessions and stuff before, but you know, actually doing something myself—that was the first thing that I did myself. If I'm not mistaken, Buggles is sort of an off-and-on project. Well, it was, but then it's, you know, I mean, Asia is... You know, <coughs> since I've been in Asia, I've not been able to do that at all. So basically, there he is, the star. 
Can you turn the volume down on that jacket about? <laughs> Get these in blue. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Hiya. How are you doing? Hello. Oh. Let you get relaxed for a second. Interview's in full swing here. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It uh, doesn't go on anymore. Uh -huh. You know, when I joined Asia, that was it. Really. Yeah. No, no. That was it. Uh -huh. Just decided that we didn't carry on doing it anymore. So you get it. You get it. When the, when the, when the, when the, uh, when the job came up for Asia, it was like, you know, that was it. Really. Mm -hmm. so, do you, there was, do you see yourself getting back with him ever? No, not really. Uh, why? Well, is this sort of a permanent thing? Semi-permanent? Indefinite? I think, you know, you, you spend time working with people and you, you, you know, you enjoy that, you know, and you have success. And then, you know, you move on. And the reincarnations of things are generally never better, you know, than the original idea that you had for it, you know, hmm. in my opinion anyway. Hmm. So, I, you know, I'll stay with this outfit for the moment. So. Hmm. Hmm. A couple of questions on over there. Mr. Lake here. Hmm. I realize you're the new member of the band, so I'm not going to pressure about a lot of questions about Asia. But yeah, it's coming. You're filling a pretty big gap left by John Wetton. Yes. What do you feel is the, are the major pressures of the new? Well, the major pressure really is to perform the uh, the material that uh, that John wrote with Jeffrey, you know, properly, so that um, you know. I, I mean, that's the the pressure is to do it credit, to do the material credit. That's the thing, really. For the time being, so you're just basically going to fill his shoes, fill his slot as a vocalist then, for the time being? Yeah, I mean, it obviously is a situation where I come into Asia, and it's an already uh, conceptually existing. And so to, to, to right now, it, that's what it is. It's mm. playing the Asian music, you know, uh, and to do it justice. Mm. That, that's my obligation at this point. Mm. Obviously, for the future... Um, what I'm looking forward to is, is creating some new music with the band. But right right now, mm. you know, it's a question of learning what is there and playing what's there and, and getting it right. What do you find is most demanding uh, from, in being a, ma a member of Asia? Oh, I mean, it's working with me. That's, that's the most demanding thing. I mean, the the, the thing is, it's um, a question of. Uh, it's a question of doing it properly. It, there's no one single thing which is demanding. Obviously, the, the question is: is when you when you play music of this caliber, it's getting it right. That's the demanding thing. There's a lot of details in the Asian music which, at first, maybe aren't apparent when you listen to the records, and uh, you you really listen carefully. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things going on in there that um, mm. uh, when I first heard Asia. You know, I'd hear the songs, I'd say, oh, well, that's a nice song, you know. And it's not until you really listen that you hear all the details and the musical movement uh, beneath mm -hmm. what appears to be uh, a very uh, simple song. Is, is it more demanding vocally or in terms of the, the instrumentals? Both, the, the, both. The, you know, both. I mean, well, you, know, you have to stay on your toes in this group. Um, this will be your first performance with Asia, uh, I guess, the performance of the Padokan. How does it feel to be with these guys? I mean, you worked with Carl Palmer for many years, but how does it feel playing with the rest of these guys? Well, very good. It's, it's always good to, you know, to work with people who, with whom you have confidence, you know. I mean, it's much easier than, um, I mean, I, for the last few years, I've been working with sort of... Um, Intermittent, intermittent musicians, you know, with Gary Moore and people, or, or, or good though they are, <clears throat> um, you know, there's nothing quite like working with a permanent group of capable people that, um, you know, you know you can depend are going to come through with, 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 with everything, you know. So it's a comfortable feeling and a reassuring feeling working with people of such uh, such standing. Hmm. 
it struck me as kind of odd that you would enter the group at this time in your career because listening to your solo stuff, it seemed like you have more of a penchant for a harder sound. Or is that just because of Gary Moore? Well, I think it's, it's to some extent because of Gary. I think it was also a reaction against the, uh, the limitations that I felt in Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I think perhaps that was another reason why I, I was determined to... Uh, to try and do other things, you know, mm. and um, so it's a combination of a reaction against one thing and an influence, you know, definitely, you know, with Gary, he, he's that sort of player, mm. and so we just, you know, we, we started to play together, and as soon as you play with anybody, it becomes a, a blend of influence, you know, it's inevitable. Um, direct this question to both of you, now that there has been this change uh, in the vocalist, do you foresee a change in the music as well, because I'm sure uh, John Wetton played a very large part in writing the song. And now that he's gone, there's going to be quite a change in, say, the, the composition process. Yeah, hopefully, you know, it'll be a change for the better. You know, you can always, you know, it's obviously going to influence it. You know, Asia's not going to necessarily be a carbon copy of, you know, the way the progression went from the first to the second album, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, we'll, the third album will be as exciting as you know the first one was when it first came out. Mm -hmm. I think that's totally right. I mean, if you change anybody, if you change a roadie in a setup like this, things will change. Because, you know, a band like Asia is about a team work. It's about everybody doing their part properly. And... Um, you'll see if you come down to the rehearsals that everybody it's a very complicated uh, show Asia so everybody counts for something in the show so obviously m me um, changing for John Wetton is going gonna, is gonna to affect things but as Jeffrey says you know we hope it's for the better and we hope that uh, the material that we manage to come through with is, is our, our material and that it, that it stands up and will stand the test of time. That's what, that's what we're about. Yeah, I mean, Asia was only really ever about the. It's only really about the sum of the parts. You know, the, the sound of the music is really only reflective of who's in there. Really, you know? So I mean, it will be reflective of who's in the group. I think it's true to say though that you know, Asia basically, the music of Asia it is based around, you know. The, the extensive keyboards that Jeffrey has. To, to that extent, I think the, the, the essence of the Asia sound will remain the same. No, I don't think that we see to having any radical changes. No, I mean, you know, it's not going to be uh, you know, four banjos. No, yeah, it's all of a sudden not going to no, get it. <laughs> Do both of you find it easy to work? That's why, I mean, one of the reasons I think that, that, uh, that I was chosen for the Asia situation was because of the compatibility between myself and my background and the future direction of Asia. We mm. do do feel similar about music and the way it should be. Mm. No, so I think there's a, there's a compatibility there. Mm. Do you find it easier to work in an ensemble than say in a solo or a... Uh, well, I mean, that's great about that, but I mean, for me personally, you know, a group is, is the best vehicle Really. It's much better because you get much more inputs. You know, you're getting the input of four people as opposed to yourself. And it's, you know, you, it's very hard to step out of yourself and be self-analytical and, and know what you're doing wrong. And nobody will tell you, you know. But in a group, nobody's got any axe to grind. You know, you should be in an open situation where you can say what you think about something in that particular format. <laughs> Why Japan for the broadcast, for this worldwide broadcasting world? Maybe I should ask your manager. No, I mean, I think we've never been to Japan. You know, we've never played in Japan. And uh, Asia was very successful in Japan. You know, it was almost immediately the group came out. It was like people here, a lot of fans identified not only with the, with the original you know, the original groups that people were in, but also had a lot of success here. 
it seemed their kind of concept almost, you know, the mm. musicians. It was all based around that Asia and Asia yeah. Yeah. thing, really. It was yeah. a concept that, you know, Asia and Asia, mm -hmm. via satellite across America, was a, a sort of universal concept. Mm. It was something that, that it was the right place to stage. Mm. Um, I think MTV, MTV played quite a part in it as well in terms of actually putting up the satellites. They initiated the offer. Yeah. And there's supposed to be a film made as well? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, the book, the movie, the album. It's all happening. The book. Yeah. You read the book, now it's the movie. Yeah. I, I heard something about, what, what is this movie? Maybe. No, it's, it's, you know, obviously it's going to be recorded. On the the, oh, made into a commercial video. Maybe one day, you know. Sweet, those kind of things, you know, you make them and you put them in the can and you see what happens. Right? Yeah. You, know, depend, you know, a lot of it depends how it turns out. Mm. There are, you know, there's no plans for like, you know, trying to make a whole movie based in Asia, you know. But, you know, it might not be great, it might be fantastic in which case, you know. Hmm. Getting back to this uh, idea of the, uh, writing the songs and whatnot, what goes into a composition usually in Asia? Does somebody come up with first of all the idea for the song and then like say you arrange it? No, there's no there's no rules for it when it comes to actually you know making music not not the way this group was established anyway. It's really however you know, whatever you do, you get got well, you sort of try and get the best out of the um, situation, you know, a lot of the writing is mainly done by John Wetton. And, you know, to a lesser degree myself. Um, but we just used to sit around and write together, you know, and then take the idea into the rehearsal game and, you know, then get everything else to input. You know. Ideas can come from anywhere. I mean, yeah. I, I've been listening to the things Jeffrey's been writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, an abundance of, of energy and ideas mm -hmm. there. And I think that, um, you know, it can come from anything. I mean, yeah. it can come from a simple melody, which... I can play and Jeffrey can hear and say, hey, listen, <laughs> you know, and it becomes something, or it can, it can come from a piece of music that he writes and I say, hey, that sounds great, can't it? you know, and you, there's no real one, one way that it, it must happen. It, it can I think happen. most composers have a stockpile of material, you know, which is like, you've got an idea and I'll put it down, I'll sketch it out, <coughs> whatever, put it on a cassette machine. And uh, I mean, for me, you know, you, you really make an album, Kind of use up some of those ideas and then put it away by the end of an hour. You have to fill it up again. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so you're exhausted, you know. Huh. You've probably exhausted all your good ideas. You were using mostly John Wetton tunes, though. Well, they're not, you know, they weren't his tunes, you know. They're not the tunes of mine, you know. Uh -huh. It was really a, a blend. Yeah. You know. So it's not like, you know, I'd say, you know, I've written this entire song, you know, when you put lyrics to it. <laughs> I have like a verse or a chorus or something, you know. It's really putting together ideas, you know. It's quite difficult to describe. Yeah. Yeah. A song's a very small thing when it starts. Yeah. It isn't really a song. I mean, I could come up with a with a three chords and a little tiny idea, mm -hmm. and that's how you start to work on something. Mm -hmm. And three months later, you've got a complete song, mm -hmm. you know. But it starts off. It can start off with almost, you know. Mm -hmm. Start off with an intro, you know, you can just get the idea for an intro. And then or a title. Start, yeah, a title. An idea for a title, you know, it can start off a very small thing. It's very hard to say where an idea comes from. It, it, what is easy to say is who put the time into developing it, and you know, and how it became, how, how it became fulfilled. You must have like a wealth of songs, though. Everybody being experienced musicians, everybody. Uh, yeah, well, I just have about a couple of hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> which, how do you decide which ones to do? There are certain ideas you get which you know are, are better than other ones. You know, yeah. that's really the story. You know, good? when you, you've got something which you personally like, I think that's that's the way I operate anyway. If I really like something that I've got kicking around. Then I can spend more time working on that, and then you have an idea that doesn't particularly inspire me. You know. So I tend to remember the good ones. You know, generally, so it's basically a four-way compromise. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's really down to working on arrangements together. You know, it's important to get everybody's input. Hmm. Kind of a silly question, but uh, yes, 
has just gotten back together again. Of course, hasn't number one. He does now. Do you sense any feeling of uh, rivalry or competition? Because Steve Howe, uh, you know, they commented in an interview that he, you know, he was approached by us and he thought it was real stupid and they were just getting together for the sake of profit. And it obviously would affect Stephen probably more than it would myself, Jeffrey, because right. he spent so many years building the, the name and the reputation of Yes. And it, and it certainly is strange when something you've done like that um, is all of a sudden takes on another form. But uh, certainly, I have no feeling about that. And um, I mean, I, I, the only thing I would say about it is perhaps, you know, it would have been a more courageous thing if they'd have formed a group and, and had a new, totally new image. In the same way that Jeffrey and Stephen put together Asia, mm -hmm. they could have called Asia, yes, right? But mm -hmm. they took the bull by the horns mm -hmm. and had a new identity. And I think there's a credit in that. But aside from that, I mean, it's a good thing that there, there is more groups like 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 this about. For us, I mean, we're happy to see them making records. I think that's true to say. Hmm. The only, the only, you know, the only problem that, that you know we face in this is the ability to be able to sustain, you know, to establish a career for themselves. I mean, Asia has a career. Asia, Asia is a vertical. I mean, it's true that you know. Yes, you know, the reincarnation of Yes seems mainly to me to be based around, you know, one particular single, you know. Well, you know, it's going to be a lot more in a group than just a hit record, I don't know. I have a huge hit record. I realise that, you know, afterwards it's nothing, you know, if, that's, if that's the basis of your success. You know, there has to be a lot more, you know, and Asia had a lot more for you know, that. This seems to be a pretty remarkable idea these days to kind of get together seasoned veterans and, and form a, you know, one of the so-called... Yeah, it's funny, but when Asia came in, it wasn't like it, that. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It seems to be coming out this year. It was considered like that from, well, from the outside, but from the inside it wasn't like that. Uh -huh. To that extent, Asia was an innovator. Yeah. Everybody all of a sudden realized it was a good idea uh -huh. to get, you know, some faces together yeah. and start getting aware, but... I'm, I don't, you know, lightning never strikes twice, yeah. you see. It's not guaranteed, you see. Yeah, yeah, it'll never work again. You see, you know, you get this idea and somebody else has a go, but I don't, it's not, it's not, it, like Jeffrey said, it's not just a question of, of putting together some faces and hoping that, that out of the mixing pot it'll work. The chemistry of success is far deeper than somebody's smart idea. It depends on people, it depends on an, a, a blend of commitment, a, a, and although you can have, as Jeffrey said, a, a, a hit single from a mixture of talents, mm -hmm. the long-term success of something is, is, is it depends far more on, um, there's far more to it than just a, a quick concept. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, that's what we're looking for in Asia, is, mm. the, is something long-term, mm. rather than, you know, a bright idea for today, you know. And I think that's one of the things that's good about me coming in, and before I'm making any records, to learn everything and play, mm -hmm. so that we feel each other out and it becomes a band before we start to work, mm. you know, I think mm. it's a healthy thing. It's a difference, it's really, I mean, it's like the difference between say a magazine or a, a, a book, you know, hmm. like a magazine you read today and, you know, you're not going to read that magazine next month, you're going to read, read another magazine, hmm. you, know. you know, you get a book, you know, you can get into it, it's much more substance in it, you know, you can try it. You give it to your friend and he reads it and, yeah. you know. Well, it's like a television program and a film, you know, you watch the television today, you know, you watch another program tomorrow, so, you know, a film is like... That's that's the whole concept of Asia. Is it? It's a big concept. Built know, to last. Yeah. 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 Built to last. Hmm. What sort of a commitment uh, when you joined the band? What sort of a commitment? Like, say, how many years of, of a commitment did you have in mind? Do you think in those terms? I personally can't can't think about it in terms of plotting out a number of years. I mean, I just uh, I'm honoured to be in Asia. It's something that. Um, you know, I feel that uh, I hope I can. I hope I can fulfil everybody's expectations. And uh, you know, record companies and managers tend to think in terms of that. You know, that's their side of it. Really, they think that you know, 
I don't think, quite honestly, any musician really ultimately thinks in those terms. Hmm. You don't concern yourself with the your, uh, the business aspect of your career, the business side of it. You concern yourself with it, but you don't. You know, it's not the, it's not the motivation. You know, the motivation is the music. You know, it, it gets in the way more than anything. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if if I wanted to be a you know a record company executive, you know, I would have gone in that way. Hmm. But that's not the way that anybody in this group is. But I mean, you're on top though, you've achieved the top position, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to drop down below that. I no, su success is always important, you know. Success in Asia didn't come from the business, no. it came from the music. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any pressures, first of all, being on top? Do you feel you have a lot to lose or a lot to gain, or are there advantages, disadvantages? It's a kind of it's an open question. It's, uh, you know, if you don't like it, you don't do it. You know, you're in a conspicuous position. Uh -huh. I mean, anything you do is conspicuous. That's the difficulty about being in a, in a, you know, in a situation like Asia. I mean, I've just joined, right? But I can see from from coming into this position that immediately. You know, everything that I do in this group is conspicuous. There's no chance to do a quiet rehearsal. There's no such thing as a quiet rehearsal, Asia. I get out there today, there's TV cameras, and, you know. I mean, you film doing everything, so it, you, one is conspicuous. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, it's good, you know, it's obviously good to be in the front line. I mean, that's what you Yeah, that's what you want. That's really. what it is. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I tend to be, you know, I tend to be doing that and playing in a bar band somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, he does that as well as it happens. <laughs> yeah, I'd right. yeah, do a few, uh, you know, a few weddings and stuff. You know, bar lips and <laughs> Do you find there are any constraints? In what what do you mean? In terms of the first of all, the music, you have a, a huge audience that you have to please, right? Or you don't really think of that. You think of basically pleasing yourself and doing what you want to do. Um, and you command. I mean, look, I mean, when you make music, you ultimately you make it for yourself. You make it the way that you want to hear it, and you make it to the best of your ability. You know, you don't make the music really. You don't make it for your friends. You don't make what they what you think they want to hear. You don't know. You, you don't know. There is no such thing as the person or the taste or you know what I mean. You wouldn't know who you're making it for, mm -hmm. and even if you did, by the time you made it, it would be out of. You know what I mean? Even if you thought that you could make something that would be in line with current trends, mm -hmm. by the time you brought the record out, it would all be over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as Jeffrey said, you've got to make a record for yourself, for your own, for your own taste, for your own satisfaction, mm -hmm. and hope. Sure, we, we obviously hope that people like what we make, mm -hmm. but you, we, you can't make it with that in mind. We mm. just wouldn't work. I but I'm sure a lot of people think in terms of now this is going to sound good on a car radio, or this is going to sound good, you know, blast it at a radio. Are you talking about production? Yeah, well, that's one thing. For oh, yeah, we want, we want our records to sound good everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, a record that's well made and sounds good. You know, sounds really good mm -hmm. on any system, mm -hmm. even the speaker that size, you know, still sound good. What do you like best about being in Asia? I don't mean the area, the I mean the professionalism of it all. Uh -huh. You know, things are done properly. Mm -hmm. What about in terms of your uh, lifestyle as a musician and just your lifestyle as a, a regular person? I mean, being a member of Asia entitles you to, first of all, a whole lot of money, the chance to travel around a lot, or, uh, lead a nice life. What, what do you see as the most advantageous things about being a member of Asia? Me personally? Yeah. Well, you know, I've been in, in, in that situation yeah. for a long time, so it's not... I mean, money, money is, there's one thing about money, perhaps it buys you a freedom of choice, you know, one can say that. Mm -hmm. But really, when you're a musician, you play a guitar and you sing. That's what you do, you know. It isn't, it isn't a question of, you know, living the big life, you know. Like this afternoon, we're off down to the rehearsals, playing the show, you know. You come back, you go to bed. Mm -hmm. And then, it's quite boring, really, isn't it? <laughs> 
good reason. How about you? Can, can, the, the best thing about being a member of Asia and being in the position you're in. It's a rather vague question, but you're in such a different position from, say, the rest of us. I mean, you're the same in that you're just a regular working stiff, but you're also in a very special The thing place. is, you don't, you, you, you never have to think about it when you're in a situation. You know, you're just in that situation. It doesn't, you know, people generally accommodate to whatever situation they're in, you know. If you, if you work in a car factory, you know, you don't think about being beyond that. That's, you know, that's what, that's what you do for a living, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a musician, that's what I do for a living, I'm in this foundation. It doesn't, it doesn't sort of make me think any differently about it. It's, it's really as if I was doing anything else from that level. But sometimes I sort of think, you know, this is a good situation to be in. This, this, uh, well, I think we've considered ourselves sort of, lucky, yeah. you know, to be able it's to travel. And, uh, there are nice things about being in a band like this. It's a mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Bands like the like Asia, the Police, uh, Michael Jackson, s selling all kinds of records. Whereas the younger bands, a lot of the younger bands are formed by the wayside. What do you think makes or breaks a younger band? First of all, I think originality is, is very important. Originality and depth of commitment. Hmm. Depth of commitment. I think you've got to be prepared also to ride a few storms. You know. Hmm. You've, got to, you've got to stay in there when the going gets, gets, may get split up. You, know, you might not sell so many records when you, uh, you know, you bring one out. Right? Hmm. You know, but if you, if you believe in yourself, you believe in your commitment for originality and making good music, you know, hmm. you're going to get through it. I think so. Anyway. Would you think Bubbles would have gone farther than it did? What, what no, could because the commitment wasn't there, you see. It wasn't there. No, because I was thinking about joining this band at the time, hmm. you know, and, and, and uh, spent some time in years. So, had we just solely committed ourselves to doing that, you know, it would have been a success. But I wanted to get out, out on stage and play live, you know, and Trevor didn't necessarily. So, there was immediately a problem there of commitment, you know. I wanted to do something that he didn't want. You've got to, you know, everybody's got to be going in the same direction in, in, a, in a group, ultimately. Although you know, there are various grades of where people think it should be going. It's, everything you do has got to be for the common good of the group. You know? Can you see Trevor Horn doing what you did and, and could he mean no. himself to a group? Not to a group, no. He committed himself to being a producer, you know. Yeah. But that's what he wanted to do, mm -hmm. so that's, that's why he's been successful. Mm -hmm. He's determined to carry on and do something, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, good for him. Mm. Good luck. How about your solo project? Do you think you could have taken that any further than you kind of went? I could have done it. How? By continuing to make more solo records. Mm -hmm. Were you satisfied with the response? To the, I think there were two albums, two mm. solo albums. What? Yeah, I was satisfied with the response. I mean, the records got the response they deserved, and so do all records. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. Um, People make up their own minds whether they want to buy records, whether they like them, you know. So to that extent, I was satisfied and I could pursue that. And I learned a great deal in making them, you know. I'd make a better record today than I made then, and I'd know why. But I can tell you for sure that for me, it's a much happier experience to be making music with, you know, three other people that are equally committed, that we can share, it's a shared experience, and the one thing about a solo career, no matter which way you cut it, is that it's quite a lonely experience, and so irrespective of the hit status, and whether you manage to, you know, get yourself a hit or whatever it is, the shared experience of being in a group is very enjoyable, mm. so, you know, uh, that's how I look at it. Mm. Do you miss and I would look at it that way, even if I'd have had a hit record. Which so I it's all right for some people. You know, some people actually prefer to be, you know, people like Barry and Rod Stewart and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, that suits them. You know, but it doesn't suit everybody. And I think someone who is fundamentally a musician, as opposed to, you know, I think a solo a solo artist tends to sort of become like, you know, he's, he's a musician and he's also an actor. You know. If you're just basically a musician, 
then you, you ultimately you, you want to play with other people on the same terms, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I think that's what it is, yeah. Hmm. What does the future um, look like in the near future after the, the Japan tour? Where Christmas. You Christmas. <laughs> what do you do for Christmas? You get it. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. Well, you know, it's like uh, a bit of the old turkey, right? Oh no, we're cutting down this year, right? It's chicken this year. It's chicken. <laughs> Pigeon, is it? Pigeon for, for Christmas, a bit of a rest, right? Yeah. A couple of weeks off and then back in working on the third album. Oh, really? That's the plan, yeah. Um, excuse my ignorance, but did you guys produce the first two albums yourself? No. No, I got from Mike Stone. Mike Stone? Yeah, and you gonna, both albums. Are you, you going to get him to do the third as well? No. <laughs> what, do you have anything you want to We've got some nice but we haven't got some nice to get to the studio, so... What do you have in mind for that, to all get together, write all new songs, and just go into the studio, or do you already have songs in the works? We've got to start putting together ideas, you know. That's all what it's about. You know? Back to emptying the yeah. emptying the can out again. It's emptying the <laughs> emptying the bag of cassettes, you know, like this on it in the middle of the floor. What what does that process happen? Do you go to each other's houses and screw it? Who's ever done it? Who's ever done it? Done it? Well, yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. you go around and you sit in a room and so yeah, listen. Up. How about this? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible, man. <laughs> You know what I mean? So you play each other ideas and you play together and some of them are obviously surface. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones yeah. you start to work on and that's how it starts. Have you all maintained your residence in Britain? Um, yeah, pretty well, I mean, well, I live back in England. this year, I've not spent much time there, you know, because we've been touring and stuff. Carl, Carl's here. He has a residence in London. You know, I mean, you know, the group is a London based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the stronghold of your popularity is basically where? Hopefully worldwide. I mean, we think of it in those terms. It's America, really. You know, I mean, Asia, this is, you know, the success is. is you know, it's been massive in America. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you, 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 you don't actually think about it in terms of that. You think about getting to everybody. Hmm. That's, the, that's what you do. What places are you most looking forward to doing other than Judokan countries? Well, you know, we, we're coming off the road for a long time, you know. I think, I think the thing that's foremost in everybody's mind is making a great thing out of it. Hmm. I personally like. Oh, sorry, John. I personally like the, uh, a universal concept for for touring because it's you know when you change cultures, you go through and you play Germany, you play a bit of France, you come and do some work in Japan. It keeps everybody fresh. You know, that's a nice thing when you're on the road. Mm. It's so easy to become tired from, you know, playing America all the time. You know. It's very tempting because America is such a big place that you can almost stay there. Well, people do, you know. People do just stay there. Journey of foreigner, you know, when they go on a tour of sticks or something, you know, they can tour for six, nine months. You know, just going round and round and round. I don't think that would be beneficial to this group, you know. Because it's, you know, it is a very English group. It is a very English group. In what way is it very English? Musically and conceptually, you know, the way yeah. that people think is a very, you know, European based music as yeah. opposed to blues based music. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. That's right. The roots come from, the, you know, they come from European culture mm -hmm. as opposed to a group like Journey, so mm -hmm. basically, you know, no, it's American music. It's very actually. much a point in Wimbledon and Village band. Yeah. <laughs> huh. All right, I'm going to get the general picture then. I want to thank you very much for your okay, time. Pleasure, yeah. And uh, good luck. Yeah, so